Hi everyone, it's Unique History Channel. Today we're doing a reading from anti-Semitism in Canada. I will be reading Goldwyn Smith's Goals. While Smith's writing on the Jewish question did not reflect all of last year's beliefs in essential immorality of Judaism, he saw the Jews as a more serious social menace nonetheless. Between 1878, when he charged that Jewish influence was strong in the money world and in the press, and 1906 when he wrote his last essay on the subject, he remained consistent. Because Jew, Jews could not be loyal to the countries in which they lived, they created influence. The influence they created was a political danger. The political tendencies should be watched with solicitude. Not only with reference to special questions to the present, where separate objects or sentiments of their race may likely conflict with the interests of the nation or the mankind, but with reference to the general progress of civilization. Because they now dispose as Platotians to cast into the scale of reaction a weight that would be that of the mere untempered by a large consideration either national or European. Later he elaborated in his thesis. Few greater calamities perhaps ever befell mankind than the transportation of the Negro and the dispersion of the Jews. Following Renan, Smith had no doubt the Jews were fully responsible for their own troubles. Take any race you please, but with an inter intensely tribal spirit, let it wander in pursuit of gain over countries of other nations, still remaining a people apart, shunning intermarriage, shrinking from the social co communion and communication, assuming the attitude assumed by strict and the Talmudic Jews towards Gentiles, plying the unpopular, perhaps oppressive trades, gleaning the wealth of the country without much adding to the productive and industry you will surely have trouble if there is persecution jews had invited it by persecuting others to pronounce the antipathy of the jews to the other groundless is in fact to frame an indictment against humanity had tactius and Juvo written about you hate richard in the ancient world and not given to find evidence of it in his research in medieval times, Jews provoked the hatred of the people by acting as the regular and recognized instrument of royal extortion. Jews avoided military service. They bought land and thereby undermined the feudal system. They attacked Christian religious processions. They loaned money at high interest. They sympathized and supported the forces of Islam, notably in medieval Spain and Italy. And they showed themselves to be intolerant of religious dissenters like Spinoza and Acosta within Judaism. Jews like Disraeli and the merchants of Johannesburg fostering war for their own financial gain. In Russia, Jews are eating into the core of her Muscovite and St. Petersburg nationality. While in Germany, they live in wait for the failing Berer, and in the southern United States, a swarm of Jews have engaged in an unlawful trade with simple Negroes, thus driving them out of business of the many old retailers. In short, Smith proclaimed in 1874 the cruel maltreatment in which they often received was caused by hatred of their misbelief rather than their repentancy. To prove this, he claimed the situation in Germany in the late 1870s. History shows, in fact, of all the European nations, Germans have been the most free and from vice of persecution. It was merely the struggle of people against the progress of an intrusive race which believed by its out by its patient oriental craft to be getting into its hands not only the money of the nation but the newspaper press and the organs of influence while it is said to avoid manual labor seldom to produce or even organize production to decline as much as possible public burdens to retain its exclusive nationality and to be little more attached to a particular country in which it happens to sojourn that is a caterpillar to a particular leaf which on which it feeds. For Smith, there were only two possible solutions to the Jewish problem, repatriation and assimilation. Until the end of his life, he favored return, returning to their land, the Jews, once the Turkish Empire was dissolved. He even suggested that Brin Britain surrender Cyprus to Turkey in payment for Turkey's granting Palestine to the Jews. If this occurred, the most exclusive Jews might return to Palestine and their withdrawal might facilitate the fusion of the more liberal elements into European society. Consequently, either assimilation or what the Zionists desire, repatriation, is the cure. 
He was doubtful, however, that a few of the race would desert the stock exchange for the courts of Zion to propose to him, the Jew, to exchange, change New York, London, and Amsterdam for Zion is little better than a mockery. The second opinion included the acceptance of Christian and patriotic values. Jews should be invited to cease to cling to this miser- miserable idolatry of race and accept humanity and its service again, find a nobler exercise for the ancestral gifts in which they rejected that service and have been employed mainly in money getting by means often low and sometimes inhumane. Only eliminate all aspects of Jewish exclusiveness, such as the acceptance of Jewish God as the only deity of his chosen Levantine race, and only by abandoning barbaric tribal practices such as circumcision and economic pursuits such as money lending could Jews become full and equal, truly patriotic members of the European civil societies in which they had been granted equal rights. In short, Jews had to reject their Jewishness and their social economic habits and adopt the softening, elevating, and hallowing influences in the patriots such as Mazzini link patriotism with the service of mankind in order to merit his status. They must be willing to melt into the general population of the West in effect to disappear. Clearly, Smith never wavered his primal conviction of Judaism as a danger to Western civilization. The exact nature of this danger was pointed out in 1878 in a series of subsequent articles. First was the possibility that Israeli, a Jew, masquerading as an Englishman while secretly representing Jewish interests, would involve Britain in a war with Russia over the Balkans. Let the engineering agents, who are Lord Beaconsfield's chief counselors and real farmers of his policy, tell you and they will, he thundered, the nation has declared for peace. England has sunk low indeed before she can allow herself to be tricked into a political intriguer to whom she is gambling table, not a country for purposes of game, into needless and continuous dishonorable and ru- ruinous war. Smith raised the same allegations in 80, 1882 when the contrary over the pogroms, he asserted that an attempt is being made to drag us into a Russian war. Jews in Smith's view were the enemies of the state. In an article for the North American Review in 1891, he stated that the Jew is detested not only because he absorbs national wealth, but because when in present numbers he eats out the core of the nationality. To the readers of Weekly Sun, he declared that Jews are a cosmopolitan tribe of money dealers whose influence threatens to be baleful to our civilization.